Good morning to you all. We had sunshine for a while yesterday, but now we got the rain and we need to make, what is it? April showers bring me flowers or something like that. Okay, one announcement is you're going to need your hymnals for the singing today, so uh, they're not going to be projected. But we do welcome everybody here to the service and to the house of the Lord. And um, if you are watching online, we thank you for, for tuning us in, and we hope that you will be blessed just as we are blessed. Okay, now, time for announcements. I know we got a couple. Claire has got her hand. Like, pick me. Okay, so a couple things. Immediately following the service, sending forth postlude, we're just going to have a seat again, and we're going to have a very brief business meeting regarding the carpet. Uh, everything has been ordered and everything, but we want you to be, uh, okay, we haven't order, ordered it, order ordered it, but anyway, it's all been planned. And so we want you to know the final cost and everything and get the congregational approval to use the money that's been set aside uh, for this project. The other thing I have, so that's immediately following church. The other thing I have that uh, Reed is singing at the Colonel's on May 19th. And we were talking last night, yesterday afternoon, about having a group outing. Um, not a all you can eat, not a food thing, just a group outing in the stands where you would do your own purchasing of beverages or food, but we, I can get a group rate for tickets. So if you feel like this would be something you would like to do, I will, I will announce it again next week uh, after I find out for exactly what the pricing and everything would be. But if you would like to do that, uh, we get together at the stadium um, just in the stands and have a, an outing to celebrate together as well as lift up Reed as he sings the national anthem. So those are the two things for sure that I have for today. Okay. Other announcements? Lou? This, of course, is my home congregation, will always be my home congregation, and the majority of my ministry has always been here. 
So I wanted to make an announcement today. This last Wednesday, my apostle talked to me, and I have, um, this is hard. I've been called to the office of high priest evangelist. <laughs> so I'm humbled by that, but I wanted you specifically to know about it from me. That, that is good news. You are blessed to be a blessing. Okay, are there any, um, any other announcements, good news? Charlotte. I'm Will we come up? Well, we'll get my stuff in. Mm. Is that one of my watches telling you? I'm not going to slide off this order yet, but I did want you to know the twins that I've asked prayers for are doing well. They are home, and if you want to see them, they're up on that billboard across from Coe College uh, that scrolls through different announcements and stuff, and they're on the mercy uh, part of that until the 17th. So you can actually see them if you want to. Thank you. First of all, thank you to everyone who made it to Mom's surprise birthday party, which was a lot of people here today, so thank you. And I know everyone was there in spirit. If you weren't there in person, and it was it was really a, a special day. It was a great day. And there's no church choir this Wednesday, just making sure those of you who are in church choir know that. I'm going to show at Theater Cedar Rapids Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Mamma Mia Concert Reunion. It's not Mamma Mia, but it's music from Mamma Mia. Um, it's almost sold out, but there are, I think, still a few seats left if you want to check it out. There's Thursday, Friday, or Saturday night. Any, any prayer request? If you have some and you don't want to stand up an announcement, here's our yellow sheets in your hymnal rack. So fill it out and put it in the offering. I have a, uh, I wanted to update you on my niece, Natalie. I asked for prayers in Dallas. She's 25 and she was having some severe heart issues. She was in the hospital for three days. They uh, brought her home. They gave her some uh, meds. Uh, they made her real sick. She went right back to the ER. They took her off the meds. I don't know what's happened since then, but she's got a series of tests this week that they're going to try to pin down what's going on with her heart. Okay. So, and her name is Natalie, 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 Natalie Jones. Thank you. Anybody else? How about our young kids that aren't here? Well, Nash, Cooper had a fever Friday. Cooper, Cooper had a fever Friday, and Nash had a fever all night last night, so she felt it was best to not subject anybody else to it. And I did hear from uh, the Webbers, and they are a little bit better, but and he's not quite as dizzy, but they're still recovering from that as well. So that's why they're not here. Good. So continue to remember them in our prayers. Um, Tamara is out on the road today. She's going to Canton, and it is her first time speaking out in the district. So she asked for prayers, so uh, for our safety and. Um, that, that's quite a ways to, grow, to go down just um, by yourself. I presume she's by herself. So anyway, prayers for Tamara. Okay, anything else? All right. Let me, let me look at my list. Okay. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to read um, the welcome. It is written by Stacy Cram. He is risen. This is a good news proclamation as we continue the Easter season of the Christian liturgical, and gets close, calendar. Easter includes the 50 days that began last Sunday and continues until we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. On the very first day of Easter, the di disciples were in mourning, and they were confused. 
The teacher that they had followed had been crucified. They had not lost only their leader and teacher, but also their friend. Jesus taught us love and acceptance. His nonviolent response to authorities was confusing and unexpected. Jesus did not lead and die in a battle to overturn the powers and the principalities ushering in a new way of life. It looked like Jesus had lost. Further, the hope of the Lord's Prayer to create God's kingdom on earth, as it is in heaven, had seemingly died on the cross with him. The disciples' experience of the resurrection was not at all like our Easter celebration. The disciples had more questions than answers. The announcement of the empty tomb was shocking. Although Jesus had foreshadowed these events, the news that he had risen was surprising. I would love to know what the disciples were thinking and doing during this time, but the New Testament only gives us a few glimpses of what happened between day one and day 50 of the first Easter season. What will we think and do as we once again hear the good news proclaimed? He is risen. Unlike the first disciples, we expected this celebration even as we started Lent. For us, the importance of resurrection might get lost because it's not a surprise that forces us to seek meaning. He is risen. It's not just a proclamation as Easter people. It's not just a singular event. This good news invites and sends us to God, invites us to shape our lives anew as Easter people. God sends us with the blessing of the Holy Spirit to embody and share the message and ministry of the living Christ. He is risen when we live Christ's mission. Today, our focus is on how we as Easter people, witness to the world. We will now sing our opening hymn, and it is 455. No, 454. Four. Shall we stand?
Would you pray with me, please? Our gracious, kind Heavenly Father, we know that you are here with us. We pray, O oh Lord, that the things we say and the things we do will be pleasing to you. I pray, dear God, that we will open our, our hearts to the message that Roger has to bring. And we thank you, O oh God, for the, for the safety and the privilege of meeting in our house of worship. We ask these things in Jesus Christ. Amen. You will be seated. Okay. Yep, you're, you're on. Okay. Uh, maybe Matthew and Nathaniel could help, and maybe Roger. We've got the Outreach International collection today. Uh, and Outreach International, they believe that chronic poverty is an injustice. They believe in the inherent worth of all persons, that sounds familiar, and that individual and community empowerment are both crucial to breaking the cycle of chronic poverty. We believe that lives should be defined by insecure, that lives should not be defined by insecurity, inequality, or in contrast to abundance. That mere subsistence is unconscionable in the presence of available solutions. This is part of the mission statement from Outreach International, and this is why we support their work. We now invite Matthew, Nathaniel, and Roger to collect the Outreach International offering. Thank you. It's always nice to see even big kids come and collecting things. Um, the prayer for peace, I'm going to read a scripture first. It's a reading from John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them. Peace be with you, he said. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not, they are not forgiven. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands, put my fingers into them, and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. 
Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. My Lord and my God, Thomas exclaimed. Then Jesus told him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him, you will have life by the power of his name. The prayer for peace comes from Tiffany and Kayla Bryan. Will you please pray with me? Spirit of the unbelievable, as humans, it is hard to believe the injustice, the hatred, and the disharmony we witness in the world. We relate, or we don't want to believe that it is real. We don't want to believe it is so painful. We relate to Thomas's disbelief, his desire that what he sees ought to make sense. Spirit, remind us that despite Thomas's disbelief, he stayed with his community. He did not give up. We pray that you would grant us the persistence and hopefulness of Thomas, that in our darkest moments we might stay the course, pursuing justice and peace, even the face of our own doubts. Resurrection was once unbelievable, and yet we follow a resurrected one. Peace and justice for all seems unbelievable, and yet we follow the path of peace. In the name of Jesus, the resurrected one, amen. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Last Sunday we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus. Today we continue our journey with the risen Christ. Our theme this week is Easter People Witness, which calls us to move forward with the words and guidance found in the New Testament book, 1 John chapter 1 through chapter 2 and verse 2, which is a witness of what John experienced in his life. And I read, Christ was alive when the world began, yet I myself have seen him with mine own eyes and listened to him speak. I have touched him with my own hands. He is God's message of life. This one who is life from God has been shown to us, and we guarantee that we have seen him. I am speaking of Christ, 
who is eternal life. He was with the Father and then was shown to us, who is eternal life. He was with the Father. Again, I say, we are telling you all about what we ourselves have actually seen and heard, so that you may share the fellowship and the joys we have with the Father and with Jesus Christ, his Son. And if you do as I say in this letter, then you too will be full, full of joy, and so will we. This is the message God has given us to pass on to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So if we say we are his friends, but go on living in spiritual darkness and sin, we are lying. But if we are living in the light of God's presence, just as Christ does, then we have a wonderful fellowship and a joy with each other. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us every, of every sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and refusing to accept the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he will be, he can be depended on to forgive us and to cleanse us from every wrong. And it is perfectly proper for God to do this for us because Christ died to wash away our sin. If you claim we have not sinned, we are lying and calling God a liar, for he says we have sinned. My little children, I'm telling you this so that you will stay away from sin. But if you sin, there is someone to plead for you before the Father. His name is Jesus Christ, the one who is all that is good and who pleases God completely. He is the one who took God's wrath against our son, sins upon himself and brought us into fellowship with God. And he is the forgiveness for our sins, and not only ours, but all the world's. The author of John's first letter reminds us of God's generous grace revealed in Christ Jesus, and our call as disciples to live ethically faithful reinterpretation and responsible application of this text invites exploration of the frame of reference of its first hearers and the environment of Christ-centered community today. This passage upholds the importance of understanding ethics and relationship to God through relationships in the community. Verses 5 and 10 use light to symbol holiness in the community. It stands in opposition to one, those who walk in darkness, two, those who claim to be without sin, and three, those who deny sin as a human condition. This passage points to the universal nature of sin as both an individual act and a human condition and the universal, the universal nature of God's forgiveness. While theologies of atonement are diverse, John's theology affirms Jesus Christ as the one who deals with the problems of sin for the whole world. As in John 3.16, the universal nature of God's love is obvious in this passage. Christ is an advocate for the whole world. The invitation is to walk in God's light by embodying Jesus, the perfect, the peaceful one.
in Christ-centered communities of justice and peace on and for the earth, we understand the counsel in this opening passage of John, 1 John through the lens of revelation in Doctrine and Covenants 163. Jesus Christ embodies the light of God and invites all to receive divine peace, forgiveness, and wholeness. Doctrine and Covenants 163.1 1 is as follows. Community of Christ, your name given as a divine blessing is your identity and calling. If you will discern and embrace its full meaning, you will not only discover your future, you will become a blessing to the whole creation. Do not be afraid to go where it beckons you to go. Jesus Christ, the embodiment of God's shalom, invites all people to come and receive divine peace in the midst of the difficult questions and struggles of life. Follow Christ in the way that leads to God's peace and discover the blessings of all the dimensions of salvation. Generously share the invitation, ministry, and sacraments through which people can encounter the living Christ who heals and reconciles through redemptive relationships and sacred community. The restoring of persons to healthy or righteous relationships with God, others, themselves, and the earth is at the heart of the purpose of your journey as a people of faith. Most of you have heard or read portions of the book written by Robert Flagham entitled, All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. I'm going to share selections from that book, pages six and seven, which will help us understand how the concepts we've just been talking about in the scriptures can translate into everyday life. Here goes. Share everything. Play fair. Do not hit people. Put things back where you found them. Clean up your own mess. Do not take things that are not yours. Say you're sorry when you hurt somebody. Wash your hands before you eat. Flush. <laughs> I didn't learn that in kindergarten. I went to a country school and it was not a flushing stool. <laughs> Warm cookies and cold milk are good for you. Live a balanced life. Learn some and think some and draw and paint and sing and dance and play and work every day some. Take a nap every afternoon. When you go out into the world, watch out for traffic, hold hands, and stick together. Everything you need to know is in there somewhere. The golden rule and love and basic sanitation, ecology, politics, and equality, and sane living. When we include the experiences we have through living in a community dedicated to being a people of Easter, who witness the love and devotion of Christ and share it with others, we become a resurrected people and receive the power and blessings of our heavenly parent, the living God. When I stand here and look into your faces, I see and sense the desire that you have to be builders of a better community, a community that welcomes others and shares hope for a more peaceful and fulfilling life. There are others not so inclined 
who need to hear our story and witness the joy and peace that comes from following the risen Christ, promoting love and not hate, acceptance and not rejection, hope and not fear. It is the mission of Christ. Are you willing to go where it calls you? Go forth, share your witness of the risen Christ, accept your commission as a disciple of Christ and allow the Spirit of God to use you as a powerful instrument in the building of the kingdom of God here on earth. Amen. And go in peace. As you know, the first Sunday of each month focuses on the disciples' generous response on abolish poverty and suffering, which is oblation ministry. So I have a little story for you of a girl who gave all of her money to those in need, leaving her nothing to give in the offertory at church. She's regretting her choice to give freely when her friend Charlie reminds her that Jesus has asked us to give to those who need what we have to give. And in her giving, she walked the talk of giving to a true capacity. Now something to think about regarding that, two questions. 
What does this story or testimony say to you about giving? And how does giving at church teach us to give in our everyday lives? Our theme today is Easter People Witness. How do we, as Easter people, show, that give, show through giving that Jesus lives in us? During the disciples' generous response, we focus on aligning our heart with God's heart. Our offerings are more than meeting budgets or paying for carpet <laughs> or funding mission. Through our offerings, we are able to join in making God's work visible to the world. As we share our mission tithes by placing money in the plates or through e-tithing or direct from an IRA, use this time to thank God for the many gifts received in life. Our hearts grow aligned with God's when we gratefully receive and faithfully respond by living Christ's mission. The deacons, please come forward. Father, we pray that you will be with us through the rest of this service and as we leave here today to truly be a giving people and that what we give here today is put to good use in your service. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
welcome at Christ's table, the Lord's sermon, uh, the Lord's Supper and Communion is a sacrament in which we remember the life, death, resurrection, and continuing presence of Jesus Christ. In Community of Christ, we also experience communion as an opportunity to renew our baptismal covenant and the understanding as we, and to be formed as disciples who live Christ's mission. Others have been different, others might have different or added understandings within their faith tradition. We invite all who participate in the Lord's Supper to do so in the love and peace of Jesus Christ. While the blessing is read on the bread and the wine, Please kneel as much as possible to face and facing the altar. O oh God, the eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son and witness unto thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Would you please kneel as I read the blessing on the wine? O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it, that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O oh God, the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his spirit to be with him. Amen.
many people who need our prayers, many people who need God's blessings. We have the names of some of these people in our bulletin, but we have three more that we need to add today. Bob Jenkins, who is Dan's dad, he has health concerns. Jenna, as she continues her job search. And Becky, as she mourns the passing of a family member. Let us pray. Our most heavenly Father, we have made a commitment again this morning to take upon us your name and to keep your commandments. This is not an easy commitment to make, and we realize that without the guidance and help of your spirit, encouraging us, guiding us, and helping us to follow you, that we would not be able to do it. And so I ask, Lord, at this time, that you would bless each one of us with whatever it is that we need in order to be able to fulfill that commitment that we have made. Lord, you are indeed a God of blessing. 
You have blessed each one of us with the ability to be here today. But you have blessed us many, many times in our lives. And so it is with faith that we come and ask a blessing upon those whose uh, names we have mentioned. They are people whom we love dearly. Some of them we don't know, but somebody here does. And so, Lord, we pray that you would bless them according to their needs in a way that we don't understand. You are indeed an awesome God. A God who deserves our praise and our obedience. Help us, Lord, to be obedient children and children of gratitude because of what you have already done for us. And we come with hope, with faith and belief that there are still things that we can do and that you will bless us so that we can accomplish them. Lord, I pray this in the name of your Son and our brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not be discouraged. You have not been promised an easy path, but you have been assured that the Spirit that calls you will also accompany you. That spirit is even now touching alive the souls of those who feel the passion of discipleship burning deeply within. Many others will respond if you are persistent in your witness and diligent in your mission to the world. Go in peace. <laughs>